The United States had some close calls when it came to the Cold War with the Soviet Union, and some of those could have ended up in a worldwide nuclear war. A Soviet officer stopped one of those incidents during the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. The U.S. Navy routinely dropped depth charges around Soviet submarines, trying to enter areas around Cuba during the crisis. One of those incidents almost led to a Soviet B-59 sub firing a nuclear torpedo at a Navy ship. It was thwarted by the rational thinking of one of its officers. Join us as we take you back to 1962, when the world feared a nuclear war daily and a Soviet officer decided that trust was more logical than nuclear war. This is the true story of how one soldier saved humans from nuclear extinction on time immemorial. The early 60s were far different. Families had dinners together, everyone watched the news nightly, and children learned the best way to avoid nuclear attacks was to duck and cover. Nuclear war threats were real. People were building bomb shelters, and the Cold War made the Russians evil in the eyes of Americans and likewise. This was the atmosphere when the Cuban Missile Crisis struck. It was a standoff between President John F. Kennedy and Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev in October 1962. That escalated into a global crisis when the U.S. sent deployments of missiles to Italy and Turkey. That effort was then matched by the Soviet Union sending ballistic missiles to Cuba. The flight distance from Cuba to Florida is only 449 miles, so those in the southern half of the United States were particularly worried. Fears were mounting after the failed Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. Americans weren't the only ones worried. The Soviets had their fears too. Cuba had fallen under the dictatorship of Fidel Castro in 1959. Even though he was also a communist, the Soviets were worried he would lean more toward China as an ally than the Soviet Union. At the time, the Soviets were worried about China's growing power. That was the reasoning behind the Soviets putting missiles in Cuba. Cuba asked the Soviets for them to deter a possible future invasion and the Soviets felt they needed to create an ally for the island dictator. For those 35 days between October and November of 1962, those living in the U.S. were constantly preparing for the possibility of war. This time, it would involve nuclear weapons. Rumors were spreading about missiles being just 90 miles from Florida and the White House was accused of ignoring the situation during the campaign season of the elections that year. A U.S. Air Force U-2 spy plane showed clear photographs of medium-range R-12 and intermediate-range R-14 ballistic missile facilities in Cuba. The worst fears were confirmed. The U.S. response was to use the Navy to create a blockade around Cuba to prevent any Soviet ships or submarines from entering the area while talks continue. The standard protocol for diverting Soviet subs was to drop depth charges around the submarines to force them to surface. The idea was to be able to tell them to turn around with the Navy ships escorting them out of the area. One of those submarines was a Soviet B-59 nuclear sub. It entered the area on October 27th and its crew became confused about the death charges falling around the ship. They weren't sure if a war had broken out and were left to contemplate what to do. A problem when it comes to the military of different countries is often communication, and that proved to be the case here. Although the American Navy had warned the Soviets that it would drop non-lethal charges to keep them out of the area and the blockade in place, the Soviet commanders of the submarines didn't get the message. To make matters worse, the crew on the B-59 was not sending or receiving communications, so they didn't know what the U.S. was intending to do. That brings us to the commander of the B-59 now experiencing the depth charges. Captain Vitaly Savitsky began to think World War III had started. The other problem was surviving in a submerged submarine. 
The air conditioning unit on the B-59 had stopped working, and the temperature was rising past 100 degrees. Crew members were fainting. They needed to rise to the surface to get air, but Savitsky feared that doing so would be a deadly attack on the sub. The Soviets had a weapon the Americans knew nothing about, a 10 kiloton nuclear torpedo. Savitsky decided that they needed to fire the nuclear weapon at the first Navy ship they saw upon surfacing. That would mean death for his crew, but would also take out several American ships in the area. It would be a costly decision, as it would start World War III if one hadn't already started. The captain needed approval from the two other officers to fire the nuke. One approved. The other officer was Vasily Arkhipov. Arkhipov was second in command on the B-59 at the time. As Savitsky told the crew to prepare the nuke, Arkhipov began trying to reason with him to avoid a nuclear confrontation. Arkhipov said he didn't believe the U.S. was trying to war with the Soviets. After all, if they were, then they would have struck the submarine already. He believed the Americans just wanted the sub to surface to talk. Savitsky rejected the idea, and a debate began between the two. After all, Savitsky needed Arkhipov's approval to launch the nuke. Soon, crew members were in a deep discussion about what to do, with many of the low-class officers unsure what to do. After several tense minutes and more depth charges, Savitsky reluctantly agreed that disarming the nuclear torpedo and surfacing was the reasonable course of action. The submarine surfaced, and Savitsky and Arkhipov opened the hatch. The fresh air was a relief to the crew. What would come next? Although they disengaged the nuclear weapon, they had arms to fight if needed. The Navy was watching them, but no one on the American vessel was showing weapons. The Soviets could see that. The Americans did just want to talk. Navy officers used an interceptor to explain the situation. Until the Soviets, there was a blockade, and they couldn't enter while the two countries were negotiating. The Soviet crew breathed a sigh of relief. Vasily Arkhipov prevented World War III by keeping a cool head and reasoning through the situation. This wasn't the first time Arkhipov saved a crew. Before the 1962 incident in the Caribbean, the Soviet naval officer helped to stop a mutiny on another nuclear submarine when its nuclear reactor began overheating. The crew was told they were all going to die of nuclear poisoning at sea. Arkhipov rushed to the room holding the reactor and began helping the crew rework the system to cool the reactor down. The team managed to cool the reactor down, saving the crew. However, all eight crew members involved in the incident died from radiation poisoning. Arkhipov was also exposed and knew he would eventually die as well, but continued to serve in the Soviet Navy, and that decision put him on the B-59 submarine in 1962. Arkhipov did later become sick with radiation poisoning and died from it in 1998. Although we may not have heard his name in the U.S., Arkhipov was well recognized in the Soviet Union. He was awarded 23 medals during his service to the Soviet military. That includes the Order of the Red Star and a medal for battle merit, along with multiple Jubilee medals. He was twice awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union for his actions. Arkhipov retired as a Vice Admiral of the Soviet Navy. Arkhipov was also posthumously honored 55 years to the day of the incident in the Caribbean. His family was given the Future of Life Award in his honor from the Future of Life Institute, a U.S. organization that has the goal of resolving threats to humanity. His daughter, Elena Andriyukova, said her father never considered his actions heroic. He did what he had to do because he understood the consequences of radiation perhaps better than most people. Those who understand the time of the 1960s state that President Kennedy was worried about interactions between our Navy and the Soviets. There was always cause for concern in such a tense situation where communication seemed to lack. 
Historians are clear on what would likely have happened if Arkhipov hadn't stood his ground and talked his captain out of launching the nuke. The attack most likely would have started a nuclear war that would have cost many lives of civilians and soldiers, along with global devastation. Arkhipov literally saved the world from nuclear extinction. Thanks for watching.